So in this video, we're going to take a look at broadcast receivers, which are essentially a way for an app to be listening for a certain event to happen and then take action based on that event. So we'll see that this application has a broadcast listener and that we can find it through Drozer and also exploit it through Drozer. And we'll see what that generally looks like. So to start off, let's do a scan of our app to see if it actually has any broadcast receivers. We can do that using run. Uh, let me just zoom this in a little bit. Run app.broadcast.info. And then we put hyphen A. And then we put the name of the app that we're trying to scan, which would be com.android.insecurebankv2. And then we could put hyphen I to get like the full set of info here. So this info basically tells us that there does exist a broadcast receiver. It's called my broadcast receiver. It acts on the action of the broadcast and it requires no permissions. That's what we really are looking for. We're looking for broadcast receivers with no permissions. Those are gonna be the most sort of lucrative to exploit if there are issues with them. So let's go to the code and see if we can figure out what's going on with this broadcast receiver. So you see here that we have my broadcast receiver and on receive, which is when we actually send something to the broadcast receiver, what it does is it takes two parameters. So it should receive a phone number and a new pass. And as long as it receives these pieces of information, what it does is it goes into the shared preferences, it captures the username and decrypts it. And then it goes ahead and um, decrypts the password as well. And then it says updated password from, and then it gives like the string that it decrypted. And then it gives the string that we added in here, which is the new password. And then in general, it goes through and it sends that as a text message to the recipient that is specified in the phone number field here. So the interesting thing about this is that if we are able to send something to this broadcast receiver, we can do a few different things here. For one, we can get the app to send a text message to a phone number that we specify. And for two, we can potentially, you know, set that phone number to our target user and set the new password to try to trick the user into thinking that their password has been reset and then maybe utilize that for like phishing or something like that. I want to mostly focus on the idea of being able to send a text message to a specific phone number because I think that's actually probably the most interesting part about this. And the reason being is because Consider a situation where you have a premium phone line where if you send text messages to it, you're charged money. If we can get this broadcast receiver to send text messages, then we would be able to send text messages to our premium line and potentially make money off of, you know, somebody sending text messages through this vulnerable broadcast receiver. So it's a way of being able to exploit that sort of idea. So this can be fairly substantial if it actually does work. So how do we actually get this to run? Well, we could come back to Drozer and we can say run app.broadcast.send and then we're gonna give it an action. And like I said, the action here is the broadcast, which we can see right here, the broadcast. And then we have to put on an extra. So you can see here that it's expecting two extras, right? One is a string and the second one is also a string. So it's expecting two strings. So we say extra string and then we take a look at what name it's expecting. So for the first one, it's expecting phone number and the second one is new pass. So the first one is phone number and then we specify what phone number we want. So let me just enter in like, um, you know, 555-4321, right? Just enter in like a fake phone number here. So we're gonna send a text message to that phone number and then we're gonna put another extra string and we're gonna say new pass. And then we can put it whatever we want here, like, uh, uh, I don't know, A, B, C, some jumble like this. Now, when we send this broadcast, if I go back to my device here, what we'll see is that when we go to into, into our text messages, we see that this new message was sent. So it's sent to this value here, and it demonstrates that it's updated the password from here to here, right? So like I said before, if you have like a premium text message line, you would be able to, you know, get messages being sent to it from a victim's phone, which would charge their phone bill and make you money. So that's like a really malicious thing that we can do with this. Another really interesting idea here is the fact that, you know, right now, obviously it looks like it hasn't stored any users in it, but um, let's suppose that we actually logged into a user here. There's a potential that we might be able to um, 
possibly leverage this to expose the password as well. Right. So if I log on to a user, so I've logged into a user and let's send this broadcast again. And let's just see what ends up happening. Do you see that it exposes the password of what we used to log in? This is because it read in the shared preference and it decodes that and adds it into the text message. So not only could we do the whole premium text message scam that I was talking about, but if I return my phone number there, then when it sends the text message, it sends me their password. So not only that, but I could also steal their account. So there's a ton of things that I can do with this broadcast receiver. And this just shows that these broadcast receivers can potentially be very dangerous depending on what they're able to do. So how do we resolve this? We can resolve this by putting permissions onto this password or onto this broadcast receiver. So we should put some sort of permissions on it so that it's not accessible to everybody in the world. But generally, since this is accessible right now, we're able to utilize it for malicious means. So when we're developing these sort of things, we're always thinking of, you know, what can we use it for? But what could an attacker use it for as well? And we want to prevent them from doing that. So um, broadcast receivers tend to be a really good place to look for vulnerabilities. If you find one that sends texts, like I said, you can exploit it in a lot of different ways. If you ever see something without permissions that sends texts, that's really a vulnerability waiting to happen.